Now let's talk about the influenza virus. There are different types of influenza A, B, C, but we are going to talk about the influenza virus as an overall idea. What is influenza virus? Uh, the structure of influenza virus, the genetic material of influenza virus, how influenza virus infects us and what is the life cycle of influenza virus. So let's talk about all of this. So let's start with some basic information. It's a common viral infection that can be deadly, especially in high risk group. People with high risk uh, may have some issues uh, and this influenza virus can be deadly. But other than that, this is a very common virus that causes very common infection in human. It uh, the flu attacks in the lungs, the nose and the throat. Okay, young children, older adults, pregnant women and people with chronic disease of or weak immune system are at the high risk of getting affected by this virus and when it's getting affected when you say getting affected means this kind of people are belonging to the high risk uh, group category okay so for them it can be harmful but for most of the other healthy individual influenza is not of that of a big threat how does it look like you can see two different structures are provided the upper one is a three-dimensional model and the bottom one is a schematic drawing but you can clearly see that the this virus looks something like it's a spherical in structure and they have multiple spike proteins surrounding it and the spike protein they have different name okay there are two different type of proteins one is this red one another one is the blue one in this picture the blue one is known as neuraminidase okay and the red one is known as hemagglutinin so hemagglutinin h stands for hemagglutinin and n stands for neuraminidase and uh, they have different combination of this H and N. For example, it can be H1N1, it can be H5N1. So similarly, these combinations help this influenza virus every single time to escape our immune system, right? That is the biggest advantage of influenza virus uh, from viral perspective. So you can clearly see that it contains uh, matrix proteins inside. It contains its genetic material then it has uh, the outer spike in uh, the lipid bilayer and the spikes are embedded into it okay and it also carries this uh, other proteins known as rna polymerase protein which is known as pb1 pb2 and pa these are the rna polymerase protein which comes with uh, the genetic material of the influenza virus which is single stranded rna so if i say uh, in this particle this is spherical but sometimes it can be filamentous it has an outer lipid membrane called the envelope derived from the host cell that it replicates inside of and the envelope is covered with glycoproteins as I mentioned hemagglutinin or HA neuraminidase NA which looks like spikes. What is the size of influenza virus ranging from 80 to 100 nanometer which is we can say a medium size as per viral size standards. The genetic material type, the influenza virus, all the type of variants of influenza virus consists of single stranded RNA. What is the disease that it causes? Symptoms include fever, chills, muscle aches, cough, congestion in the runny nose, congestion in the throat and nose, head, headaches and fatigue. So fever and common flu symptoms. What is the incubation period of influenza virus? The incubation period of influenza is usually two days, but it can range from one to four days but generally within one to two days you will see all the symptoms what is the mode of transmission as this influenza virus is a causative virus of common flu and fever then there is a spreading mode which is highly uh, contagious and that is spreads from person to person either by inhaling the virus or by touching surfaces contaminated by the uh, virus then touching the mouth or nose the infected droplets are expelled into the air through coughing or sneezing. So obviously via aerosol, the viral particle can take entry from an infected person to a healthy person. Let's look at the scientific classification of this virus now. The genus is Alpha Influenza virus. The species Influenza A virus, Kingdom orth Orthornaviri, okay, Orthornaviri and family Orthomyxoviridae. Now let's look at the three different types of influenza virus and a quick comparison between influenza A, influenza B and influenza C. Uh, let's look at the genetic component. In influenza A, it's eight RNA segments present. In influenza B, also eight RNA segments. But in influenza C, there are seven RNA segments. This is something, uh, one more thing which is unique about influenza virus is that the genetic material is RNA, but there is not a single RNA. There are multiple segmented RNA. 
influenza a and b both have eight segments of rna while c has seven segments of it the structure influenza a has uh, 10 viral proteins b has 11 viral proteins and c has nine viral proteins the host range for influenza a is huge that is human swine avian canine marine mammals influenza b has human only influenza c has human swine and canines only the clinical features of influenza a can cause epidemics and pandemics with significant mortality in young persons that is for influenza type a influenza b has a severe disease seen usually in older adults or persons at high risk but there is no pandemic witnessed with influenza b influenza a is the one that causes that has a capability of causing pandemic okay uh, while influenza b uh, does not cause pandemic but it has a severe uh, infection for older people and influenza type c cause mild disease without any kind of pandemic so influenza c is the most uh, i mean is the least concerned and influenza a is the dangerous one b is somewhat moderate let's look at the life cycle of influenza virus and how they replicate inside the host cell so the very first step again is the binding to the specific receptor to the host cell that is salicylic acid that is present and uh, with the help of the spike protein that is hemagglutinin and neuraminidase this this structures this influenza virus can contact with the salicylic acid receptor on the surface of the host cell and get engulfed inside okay via endosome it's, it's get in, engulfed inside an endosome and then there's a ph dependent fusion uh, and after the fusion of a vesicle of low ph okay the endosome becomes more acidic and inside of which it causes the dissociation of the lipid layers and after the lipid layer dissociation here you can see the segmented rna genome is released and this segmented rna genome is transported inside the nucleus of the host and this is where uh, and i already told you that they not only contain their own genetic material but they also contain their rna polymerase so here uh, there is transcription and replication both of this process will continue transcription of this rna as we know that this process can make more and more copies uh, of plus tended viral mrna it will produce and it, from this plus tended rna it will also continue to produce the minus tended rna and minus standard RNA is the one that is needed for the assembly. So we know there is a plus and minus standard RNA. So plus standard RNA can be used as a template to make minus standard RNA. And once minus standard RNA is produced, then it can be used as a genetic material. So, so formation of progeny. Once minus standard RNA are produced there, they are transported into the cytosol. They are transported back into the cytosol. And here also you can see that uh, the viral mrna which are plus standard mrna produced are transported inside uh, into the cytoplasm this is where the protein synthesis begins so protein synthesis always occurs from the plus standard mrna that's why plus standard mrna production is necessary but minus standard rna production is necessary as a genetic material so export is done by the cyclosporin a exporting structure in the nucleus and export is done and then uh, once export of plus standard rna into the cytosol protein synthesis will begin and uh, once they make all the necessary structural proteins then uh, in this case they mainly need to make proteins which is new ne neuraminidase hemagglutinin and also m1 and polymerase enzymes which will be needed uh, by this viral particles when they are going to infect uh, the next healthy host so basically there is no uh, you know there is no such kind of icosahedral capsid structure here it's just like a virus with the enveloped coating so once the negative standard rna are produced it is uh, then packaged here near the cell membrane and why they are packaged near the cell membrane along with the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase spike proteins m2 and polymerase m1 m2 polymerase proteins are inserted inside and a part of the host cells cells membrane is taken uh, as a budding vesicle to take out and take off as a viral particle release from the host cell that's why we say that this kind of virus that is the influenza virus they don't have their own envelope they steal uh, the lipo uh, the lipid structure or the lipid layer from the host cell membrane while budding out of it and that's how 
they'll bud out okay at this moment you can clearly see that they have bud out and after budding out they will now move and they will start infecting the other healthy host so this is the life cycle of influenza virus so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye